Cheers. This is the part where I test things at the beginning of the stream. So if you're just logging in right now, or if you're thinking of logging in right now, or you're trying to figure out what the heck is this guy doing, he's going to go over to, he's going to go over to, um, let me see. Let me see. I'm trying to see if we have a stream, a live stream at the moment. So wait a minute. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this. Have we started yet? I'm just waiting to see if YouTube is actually doing the stream at the moment. So just bear with me for a second here. It says, um, it says, uh, it says, um, I, I don't, I don't actually see this is crazy. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to say something in the chat here and you can tell me whether you, whether you can hear me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Because I can't see. I can't see my video. Why is this not working? Is the stream not working? Is the stream not working? Hmm. Are we streaming? YouTube, are we streaming? Hello, YouTube. Are we streaming? I don't see the stream on YouTube. Let me just go over here and see if uh, this works any better here. YouTube, are we streaming? It doesn't look like we're streaming. It doesn't look like we're streaming. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this is very interesting. I don't think I've had this happen before. Stop streaming. It says that I'm streaming. It's like I am streaming, but nothing is happening over on the YouTube side. Hmm. Hello, YouTube, 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 can you hear me? I'm going to have to edit out this whole first part, aren't I? I mean, the whole point of doing this without a net is that I don't have to edit anything out or I don't edit anything out. You get to see, you know, all the mistakes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. They might actually be working finally. Hold on. Hold that thought. Let's check it out. There's, there's like a, I'm just a commercial here. Let's find out if it's working. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it's actually working. All right, since it's working, I'm going to do the official introduction, okay? First of all, I'm going to have a sip of wine and go, Phew. I was really starting to worry there for a minute. Excuse me for a second. Uh, and then uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, go to the scene here. So I'm going to go scene transition. I'm going to go fade on the scene transition. And then we're going to do the official, the official, Cooking with Linux without a net introduction. You ready for this? All right, let's do this. All right, today is a Cooking with Linux without a net uh, that we're going to do with, um, uh, did I not transition? Did I not transition? Oh, that was very silly. See, I have to do it again now. I have to do it again. This is crazy. I have to do it again. Okay, we're gonna do it again. One more time, all right? Just one more time. So you'd think I never did a live show before. You'd think that I never did a live show before. Well, obviously I need to, <laughs> I need to up my game when it comes to this sort of stuff. This is terrible, this is terrible. Okay, so today, today is a special, hey Jaden, nice to have you on board. And uh, thanks for being here in the chat. In fact, I appreciate everyone, all of you who appear in the chat. Thank you so much for being there. Uh, today is a special virtualization show. I've had, uh, you know, it's funny, every show that I do, um, I invariably will do some kind of a distribution and, um, and I'll run it inside some kind of virtualization software. So today what I've done is I've, I've gathered a whole pile of virtualization software. Oh, that one's in the wrong place. There we go. I've gathered a whole pile of virtualization software, which I'm going to take you through and I'm going to show you different ways to actually do this. So, so the very, uh, what I've done is I've gathered a whole pile. Last week, if you might remember, if you were actually here for last week, you might remember that I tried Arco Linux and that one did not work out quite the way that I wanted to. And frankly, it's my fault. I admit it, it was actually my fault. I'm, I'm the reason that this didn't work out. Anyway, so this week we're gonna give it a try again, but we're gonna give it a try by going through a whole pile of different virtualization examples, okay? At the core, 
And what I've done is I've assembled some of the tools that are the more popular ones. You've probably heard of VirtualBox. I'll take you through that one along with a few other ones. And then you can see how they vary and what you might want to use one over the other. And uh, for that matter, whether you want to be able to use one over the other. Hey, Stuart, nice to have you on board. Cheers to you, Stuart. Let, here. let, me, have a, let me have a drink to you and to, uh, let me have a drink to you and to Jaden, <laughs> who are on board already. Yes, this is my excuse to drink at lunchtime every Tuesday. I admit it. I admit it. All right. So we've got a whole bunch of ISOs here. Now, I mention ISOs because this is one of the ways that we distribute or that, you know, we make uh, Linux distributions available. Once upon a time, we used to actually have these things, um, which we, uh, you know, made available through, uh, through uh, DVDs. Oh, oh, I would be remiss. I don't know. Oh, by the way, I want to point out that my, my, one of my sons was up at like a quarter to four this morning. So if I'm... If I sound like I'm, I'm not totally here, there might actually be some truth to that. So I want to thank Linux Journal for making this possible, for supporting the show. Thank you so much. And uh, to anybody who's listening out there, uh, please consider going to cookingwithlinux.com. And if you're going to cookingwithlinux.com, consider clicking this button down here and supporting my bad habits of making videos. The other thing that I want to suggest while I'm over here with Linux Journal and so forth is I'd like you to consider this as well. YouTube.com slash Freethinker at large. You know how this is. Go over here. If you haven't already done so, there's going to be a red button here that allows you to subscribe to the channel. Please do that. That would be lovely. I would really appreciate it. On with the show. All right. So we've got all these ISOs, which is how, we dist which is how Linux distributions are, are um, shared. And in fact, if we go to, uh, let's go to, um, let's not go to Ubuntu because everybody goes to Ubuntu. Uh, let's go to Debian. Let's just go directly to Debian, Debian.org. Um, if we go to Debian, you're going to find that there are ways about getting Debian up here. I mean, there's a lot of information, obviously, on the site, but there's always something about getting yourself um, uh, an installation image. And there's always a variety of them, but they have this ISO over here. What that means is they're image files that you can burn to a CD or a DVD. And, uh, and then, of course, you can distribute it to other people. You can even burn these things to like a little, um, you know, a little USB key that you carry around in your pocket. I have one that looks, like a, uh, that looks like a Lego piece. It's not in my pocket at the moment. It's in the other room. I could go get it, but I won't. It looks like a little Lego piece. And it's actually, uh, I always carry a Linux distribution on it that I can boot up, you know, and save people's systems if we desperately need to save somebody. So you would download one of these. They show up as, a, as an ISO file and the ISO file lets you boot. Now, at its simplest form, um, the one that I showed you the last couple of times is something called a virtual machine manager. And you, you saw me do this. If, if you watch the show, you saw me, you've seen me install a variety of distributions. This is virtual machine manager. This is the one that comes by default with things like Red Hat and stuff like that. Um, hey, Damon, I, nice to have you. Welcome aboard. I'll have a drink to you too. I'm having a drink to absolutely everyone who shows up on board. Oh, by the way, I'm drinking a, um, I'm drinking a Carlo Rossi red today, a California wine. So this is a Carlo Rossi red table wine. Very inexpensive. Pretty darn good, actually. And um, okay, here, I'm going to show I'm going to show you the secret. Okay, I know I'm going all over the place. Remember what I said? I was up before I was up before 4 a.m. today. This is a little bit rough on me. So here, let's let's go back to OBS Studio for a second here. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you this bottle of wine. Okay. It's a jug. It's an actual jug. It's an actual jug. Carlo Rossi Red. That's what I poured myself for lunch today. It's it's inexpensive. It's a good wine. I recommend it. And no, I don't chug that by the jug. I really don't. I want to make that clear right now. Okay. All right. Now that I've made that clear, <laughs> I'm going to minimize this again. Okay. Now, all these fancy interfaces, by the way, are as are actually part of something called QEMU-KVM. And there's a... Um, there's a, there's a variation to this, which is, um, which, uh, is in, in virtualization, rather, I should say, which is VirtualBox. VirtualBox is not part of QEMU. It's not part of that kind of virtualization. <laughs> yeah, fancy, Dave and I, fancy. <laughs> um, but KVM at its simplest, if I just type KVM, it actually opens up a, um, a window here which looks like a boot screen and of course it's waiting for some kind of boot information there's nothing coming through the machine here let me maximize that for you to take a look at it see no bootable devices interesting huh all right so let me um, let me do this a little bit differently here um, if I take 
if I do KVM, um, and actually QEMU KVM is a collection of other products. Now, just, I wanna show you KVM in slash ETC slash group, okay? So let me see, uh, more slash ETC slash group. Okay, if you take a look in here, you will find out that uh, somewhere down here, somewhere down here, there's KVM. Uh, let me go to the system, blah, blah, blah. Here, let's just go grab KVM slash ETC slash group slash not grub group. Man, dude, dude, having a tough time. There you go. I've added M. Gagne, which is my uh, login there. Running cubes on Power Laptop and Zorin on Everyday Laptop. Hmm. All right. Um, see KVM down here? If you want to be able to run virtualization, like that, basically be able to run this thing fast, okay, you need to be able to do this directly from the command line here, okay? So, uh, or you need to have KVM, you need to have your user ID associated with KVM group to be able to get acceleration by default, all right? So if you're finding that you're not getting acceleration, and one of the ways you'd know it is you would type KVM and uh, it would give you something about, you know, not be able to execute it because it doesn't have permissions. That's because you wouldn't be in the KVM group down here, okay? So if you're on a new machine or if you've just installed something and it's not working and you're not getting the acceleration, there's a distinct possibility that it's because KVM is actually not working, okay? So KVM is also part of a series of package LS slash QEMU, uh, sorry, QEMU. And if I just tab over, um, sorry, QEMU dash, and I just tab over, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different architectures that are supported by this. In other words, the system is capable of mimicking a whole pile of different architectures, Spark boxes, PowerPC, um, whatever Unicore 32 happens to be. I don't know that one. MIPS. MIPS is in there as well. Um, and of course, the one that we typically use is QEMU system x86-64. Let me highlight that one. I'm pointing at the screen. You can't see that. But that's the one that we typically use by default on some, like on the kind of architecture that I'm running at the moment. Now, so we could go system uh, x86-64, and you'll see that basically I have exactly the same thing that happens there. Look familiar? All right. Um, dash enable, uh, dash KVM is how I make sure that acceleration is actually turned on on this thing, okay? No errors other than the fact that I can't boot up. Um, but let's add some memory, dash M02048, so we'll ask, uh, we'll add two gig of boot memory to go with that. I'm gonna say dash boot, and I'm gonna say D. Uh, that is a holdover from the old days where we called the CD drive or the DVD drive, the boot, or we called it the D drive. Remember C colon in the old Windows days? And D was actually the CD-ROM drive. And of course, what was the diskette? Come on, people. What was the diskette? Points for the diskette. Points for the diskette. A. A or B. Or B for the floppy disks. All right. C for the hard drive and D for. And then, of course, we had other drive letters for all the other shared things that were connected. So I'm going to say boot D. And, of course, it's going to not work because it doesn't know what I'm talking about. It says boot D, boot D what? But let's take a look at these ISOs here, see the different ISOs. I'm gonna take Nano Linux, which we covered in here, because I wanna do something really, really quick here. And I go Nano Linux 64, and then I'm gonna, whoops. Uh, let me see, failed to get write lock. Is another process using the image? Is another process using the image? I don't know. But if I get some, oh, here, sorry, quit. Maybe that's what's happening here. What? All right, let's not use Nano Linux. Have I got that open somewhere else? Now I'm sitting here worrying. Hmm. Hmm. Have I got this open somewhere else? It doesn't look like I've got it open somewhere else. So let's uh, take Ubuntu then. Ubuntu. There we go. There we go. Ubuntu works. So uh, so I must have Nano Linux open somewhere. Now I'm actually wondering where that is actually happening. All right. So we've got Ubuntu booting up on the screen here, and uh, this is booting up off the live DVD now. The man pauses for another sip of wine. And while it's doing that, I want to show you um, one of the ones that... So this is the nice thing about QEMU KVM. The really nice thing about that is it's built in to um, Linux distributions. Any modern Linux distribution is going to have that built in. And any modern uh, computer, whether it's a desktop computer, whether it's a laptop, uh, here I've got an Acer Aspire E17. Uh, it's a um, it has 12 gig of RAM. It's got an Intel i uh, Core i5. 
virtualization is already built into this thing. So I actually don't have to um, worry about uh, whether or not I'm going to be able to run accelerated processes on this thing. So let me just, uh, let me uh, back, go back down to the shell here for a second where I started this. So all this, firing up this virtual machine here, I did by using QEMU, all right? So this all happened like that, but that's not the same. So I could actually run and test any kind of a live image this way without having to fire up any fancy graphical program or whatever. Um, but this obviously, this command line version of doing things is something that's only available under Linux. If you happen to be running on a Windows box, um, this is not going to be available, especially even if you do want to try a Linux distribution. And this is where an oldie but a goodie comes into play. Okay, I say oldie but a goodie because this was one of the first virtualization, uh, one of the first virtualization programs that was available um, in the Linux world in a big way. And by the way, there are other things out there besides KVM. There's Zen, which I'm not going to go into today because I don't have a Zen enabled kernel running on here. Excuse me while I take a sip of wine. Um, VirtualBox is an Oracle product. It's actually made by Oracle Corporation. It is a free, pro a free product that you can download and install. It's available for Windows. It's available for Linux. You can get it for a whole whack of different environments. Uh, let me stretch that out a little bit better. And what we're going to do is I'm going to go and boot up the much maligned Arco Linux. Last week, if you were here, you, know, you may notice that I installed Arco Linux and I said, this thing doesn't have a desktop. What kind of a distribution nowadays doesn't have a desktop? And I got beat up online for it. So, so let's uh, do Arco Linux. And uh, I actually have a couple of different versions of it, but we're just going to say Arco Linux at the moment. And up here, memory size, I'm going to say 2048. And I'm going to say next. Create a virtual hard disk right now. This is a little bit different than uh, what we get in some of the other virtualization software uh, like QEMU or uh, Vert Manager and some of the other ones. What is interesting about this one is you'll see that you can actually create a disk of a very small size disk that will be dynamically allocated as in it will grow with, you know, as the, um, as the system grows. Now, the only catch is that it can be a little bit slower. Now, this is a fairly fast system, so I wouldn't worry about that too much, but it can be a little bit slower if you do that. Um, oh. And uh, so let's click next. I'm actually going to go with the da dynamically allocated here, just, just for fun on this one. It's going to start out with like a little tiny disk. It starts out with a four megabyte disk, but the thing will grow up to eight gigabytes, okay? So I'm going to say create. And uh, there we go to a blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read uh, the left part of this window because it's the first time that I'm running VirtualBox. I just installed VirtualBox today just for you. I typically don't have it sitting on my machine, but in the past, this is how I would do things. One of the good things about, um, about uh, VirtualBox is it's quite pretty. I mean, it's, it's, it's really well made. It looks great. Um, and honestly, I would actually recommend it. So let's go to settings. I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to storage. And under so storage, you'll notice that I've got um, the uh, DVD drive over here, the virtual disk that's been created, .vdi. Uh, VDI is, a, is uh, the virtual disk format that's actually used by VirtualBox. Okay, that's what VirtualBox uses. Um, let me see. I'm going to scroll over here. and oh, Sorry, I'm going to go over to empty and it says secondary master. It's a live CD DVD. I'm going to check it, but I'm going to click down here and I'm going to go with Arco Linux. Okay. Um, now, actually, let me go back over here and let me go um, choose virtual disk drive. Um, I've got a bunch of, these are all the ISO files that you saw in the folder down here. Remember the folder down here or the, uh, the directory? In the directory, these are all the things that I've got there and you're seeing them over here in VirtualBox. So, we are going to go with, uh, yeah, I, let's go with i3. I took a couple of Arco Linuxes. Again, I'm trying to make it up to the Arco Linux people because I beat up on them last week for not having a graphical desktop. And it turns out it's my fault. It's my fault. So mea culpa, mea culpa, and all that. Um, all right. So, okay. All right. You ready? So now we've got the machine set up. There are other settings that uh, I could go into, but I'm going to go and make this really, really simple and go start. Shall we? Uh, fail. Whoa. Whoa, details, what happened? Uh, running code, console wrap, virtual box can't operate in VMX root mode. Please to see, oh. Um, seriously? Seriously? Uh, recompile your kernel, seriously? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, being used by another hypervisor. Do I have another hypervisor running at the moment? Um, man, I gotta check this out here. PSAX, prep, KVM. Do I have KVM? Whoa. Uh, okay, I still have that running here somewhere, somehow. Oh, did I fire up boxes? Where is boxes? You know what? Uh, I'm just gonna kill it. Kill 2969. Kill 2969. That explains why Nano Linux was giving me a hard time. Uh, let me see. All right, shall we try that again? Shall we try that again? Let's try that again. Okay, all right, let's try it again. Start. Ha! There we go. <laughs> Remember what I said about this whole, um, do I still play Airport City? Not so much. No, I do, tend to, I do tend to play a lot of games, and I do mean a lot of games. Uh, so let's just boot this, and uh, let's take a look at what this thing looks like. I'm going to maximize this. Um, yes, I know about the mouse pointer integration. I know about the mouse capture. No, I haven't played it in a while. I actually like, I mean, I, I, I like, I like a lot of, um, uh, what's, what do they call them? Simulations. I like simulation games quite a bit. And Airport Linux was yet another one of those simulations. I played a lot of, um, of, uh, SimCity build it as well, but I haven't actually used that one in a little while. I, I mean, I've got like a really, you know, well-developed city, but I just haven't played it in a while. For better or worse. So going back to VirtualBox. VirtualBox is, you're now connected to the wired connection. There we go. So VirtualBox, you do not need to show this again. VirtualBox is the, um, to the Arco Linux B installer is the one that you're going to be able to find for pretty much any distribution. So if you don't want to mess with things like KVM, if you're not, if if you don't want to have to go looking for, you know, um, different graphical interfaces to install Linux distributions, this is definitely the one for you. We're going to start the Arco Linux install because, like I said, I want to be nice to these guys because I, I blew it last week. So I'm going to say uh, location Toronto, and while it's installing on VirtualBox here. And, oh, by the way, here's, here's one of the things that VirtualBox does really, really well. Check this out. Um, it, it, does the, it does the resizing uh, thing quite, of course, I went, and, I went and blew it while it was running here, but um, it does the resizing thing quite well. Now, the installation is not done, so let's continue. There we go. See? See how nice that is? It just does that on the fly really well. So I'm going to go next. Toronto. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do the French Canada. Why does it want me to do French Canada? English, U.S. Next. Uh, erased all oh, sure this is a virtual disk I'm not worried because it's a virtual disk by the way for the record I still get terribly scared <laughs> whenever I do this because I assume that you know someday something's gonna go wrong and I'm gonna install it where I don't want to install it but it's fine what's my name we're gonna call my we're gonna call me Francois today Francois my my poor waiter what is the name of this computer Arco Arco, this is the Arco i3, isn't it? Arco i3. So we're going to call it Arco i3. Choose a password. S-E-C-R-E-T. S-E-C-R-E-T. No, in real life, I don't use that as a password. I'm going to say use the same password as the administrator account. No, I may not do that either. But this is what I'm doing here right now. Install. Let's install this thing. All right. So while this is happening, while this is happening, I'm going to uh, do that, that minimize thing and force it to resize itself. There we go. While you're doing your thing there. And uh, while it's doing its installation, I'm going to go over to here. And is this going to mess me up? Is this going to mess me up? Because it really didn't like the fact that I was running KVM. That means VirtualBox is running KVM these days. Ah, Fascinating. VirtualBox didn't used to run KVM. VirtualBox used to have a kernel module that you had to lo load when you were doing it. Yay for using i3. Dave and I, I aim to please. <laughs> I aim to please. I may actually have to go through with the, uh, with the whole installation here because I have a horrible feeling that if I try to run something else, uh, or, uh, sorry, OracleBox, VirtualBox is, is going to be angry at me. He says as he tries to, you know, make it do a whole bunch of things while it's doing one thing or another. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out if we break it. What do you think? Shall we find out if we break it? Let's go with a uh, virtual machine manager just for fun. We're going to go to the virtual machine manager while this thing is trying to install over here. Okay, while the Arco Linux installer is doing its thing. We're going to go to virtual machine manager and I'm going to say new 
and we're gonna say create a new uh, virtual CD-ROM. I'm gonna say browse, and I'm gonna go into my ISO folder, and we're gonna take Budgie. We're gonna take Arco Linux Budgie and check that one out, okay? And I'm gonna say forward, and we're gonna find out whether I break the other install while I do this. Yeah, come on, refresh the screen, refresh the screen. That's the problem with doing uh, too many things live at the same time, especially if you are trying to stream it at the same time. You know what? Let's uh, we won't do twenty gigabytes. Let's just do um, let's just do ten gigabytes, okay? Ten gigabytes. I'm gonna say forward, and uh, we'll call this one Arco Budgie, Arco Budgie, Arco Budgie, and uh, we're gonna go finish. The virtual machine is being created. Allocation of disk. Aha! Aha! I was right. It's, it, it blows up, it blows up. You know what? Um, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. This is like almost really bad of me. I'm trying to decide whether I just kill this thing. I'm gonna kill the installation. We're gonna go back into it in just a moment because I, I wanna do the other ones. All right, let's not do that. Let's not kill the installation quite yet. Uh, let's instead, okay, so we've got virtual machine manager over there. So this is how we create a virtual machine. The other one that I have used in the past, which I actually like, I know one of you guys is using boxes. Present terms. Hello. Good to have you. Nice to have you aboard. Um, one of the ones that I have used a lot in the past is AQEMU. And obviously it's not installed here at all. This, see, I told you I do this stuff from scratch so you can see me actually failing. <laughs> So we're going to say create a new virtual machine over here. I'm going to say uh, wizard mode typical uh, Linux 2.6. Sure. Next. Uh, KVM recommended. And uh, I'm going to say we're not going to call this one Linux 2.6. We're going to call this one. We're going to do something different than this one. This, we'll make this one a, um, a Kubuntu box. Okay. Because I know that we've got a Kubuntu 18.04 install sitting out there. And uh, I'm gonna make the disk just 10 on here, just mostly because I, I know it's going to fail because it's already failed when I tried running this while the installation was happening over in VirtualBox. See, now I'm not sure that VirtualBox is actually running anymore because I've interrupted it so many times. Uh, let me see, machine. Do I just wanna shut this down? Is, do, do I believe it's still running? Do I believe it's still running? I'm not convinced that it's running. I'm not convinced that it's running, so I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it. I'm gonna kill it dead, machine. Um, actually, there we are, running, and I'm just gonna force it closed. Uh, machine, machine. Where's close? Where's, oh, there we go, power off. There we go, yep, I know, I know. I know I did bad things there, I did bad things. All right, we're gonna get rid of virtual box. We're gonna get virtual box out of here. And we're gonna continue with AQMU. Finish. All right, if I finish the button, Kubuntu. Now, over here, so as with virtual box, as with any of these things, what you're gonna to have to do is, um, hey, present arms, good to have you here. Did I already say that? It's good to have you all here. I love you guys. Have I said that recently? Because if I don't say it enough, if I don't say it enough, you know, I need to say it now. Because, you know, I love having you here. Uh, 256 megabytes, let's go with 2048 because that's my favorite number when I'm creating a virtual machine. I love two gigabytes, it's wonderful. Graphics, uh, let me see, uh, KVM architecture, KVM, yes, we're doing KVMC, different accelerators, TCG, KVM, Zen, uh, but we're gonna stick with KVM for the moment. Media, media, uh, CD-ROM, advanced. Uh, let's actually go over here and find our ISOs. ISOs, ISOs, there we go, ISOs. And uh, let's go with Budgie again. We're gonna open up the Budgie and we're gonna say okay. And we're gonna say apply and we're gonna go back into the, uh, the virtual machine over here. Let me see, Kubuntu, KVM, uh, CPUs, two gigabytes. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about whether the audio is set up. I'm just gonna say apply. And then we're going to fire this one up. This is the start button, or you can right click up here and you can choose start, however you wanna do this. So let's go start. Let's go start. All right, I'm gonna say it again, start. Hmm, hmm. Too many virtual machines running at the same time. Uh, I think I'm paying for it now. You're paying for it, dude. All right, let's let's finish over here. Let's there we go. The virtual machine is being created. All right, see, okay, that one is working. I've got too many virtual machines. It's not all these programs running simultaneously. Oh, I didn't drink. 
to present arms, present arms. Stuart, you're absolutely right. I, I want to hold my glass up and drink to present arms. I'm going to do that right now. There we go. In, in case, um, in case I'm not, uh, in case I'm not entirely believed, there we go. There we go. See, drinking to present arms and to Stuart and to Dave and I and to Jaden and to uh, anybody else I've missed out there. I'm drinking to you. Uh, all right, let's go back to this. Let's go back to this. All right. Arco Budgie. Arco Budgie. Let's go full screen. Oh, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. All right. This is the Budgie interface. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Welcome to the installer. Shall, shall we give it a try? I promised these guys that I would actually go through and do this at least once. So let's do it at least once. English, Canada. No, I don't want French. I want, you know, and, and I'm, I realize I'm a French guy. I know that. Oh, seriously? Seriously? Point of order, lol. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> I feel... <laughs> Leave full screen. <laughs> ah, having a tough time today. English, US. I, why, why is my mouse not working? My mouse is not working. <laughs> ah, man. Control Alt. Okay, there's my mouse. I can see my mouse. Now I've got it back in here and it's not working inside. <laughs> <laughs> oh man all okay, right i'm gonna just i'm gonna force quit on here and what i'm going to do is i'm just gonna run one virtual thing so let's go over here and i'm gonna say psax <laughs> grep kvm oh there we go see i've got seven four oh four Oh, come on. Sudo kill 7404. Give me a hard time, will you? <laughs> this is just really not working. Hey, we've got you. World Cup conflicts. All right, I have to drink to someone else. Curry, yeah, good to have you on here. Uh, where are you? There we go. Uh, one more person that I have to drink to. <laughs> Thanks. Good to have you aboard. Sure, yeah, good to have you aboard. All right, I've got to get I've got to get on with this. I have to do this. I have to make this happen. This has got to be real now. Okay, so what shall we do? Shall we go? I'm gonna let you guys decide. Shall we go? We haven't done boxes, right? We haven't done boxes. All right, let's go with boxes. We're gonna do this with boxes. Okay, all right, we're gonna do this with boxes. New. <laughs> I'm not drunk. I swear to God, I haven't even finished my glass yet. I'm not. Do you want me to do I3 or you want me to do budgie? Which one am I going to do? I3 or budgie? Come on. Oh, somebody said, All right, let's do I3 because I never do I3. I never do that one. So I'm going to say I3 and uh, two gigabytes of memory. Perfect. I'm going to go with the 20 gig drive. No problem. Let's go create. And we are going to boot this thing. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Talk about messing up. All right. All right. We're going to do it. And this time I'm going to let it happen. I'm not going to interrupt it. I'm not going to mess with it. I promise. Maybe. Are you allowed to say, hey, Dave and I, I went for I3. I did it for you, dude. All right. Uh, <laughs> ah, let's go full screen. 1600 by 900. I probably shouldn't even be doing this because every time I change something, I mess it up. I mess it up. So... So let's pretend that I know what I'm doing here. Arco Linux installer next and next. And please let, please don't stop me now. Uh, US, I have erase. We're going to go through with this. We're going through with this. I swear. What is your name, Francois? I'm going to blame it on my waiter. And uh, we're going to call this one Arco i3. Arco i3. <clears throat> Choose a password. S-E-C-R-E-T. S-E-C-R-E-T. Uh, don't do this at home, kids. Do not try this at home. Well, you can try the install, but don't try using that password at home. Install. All right, so we're going to go through the process. <laughs> uh, I'm a bad boy, I think. I'm not sure. There we go. Anyway, uh, 93 available updates already. 
We've just, we're just installing it now. There are already 93 available updates. All right. Hey, listen, while this is happening, I'm going to uh, leave full screen just for a second here because uh, before I'm done, before this is over, uh, I have to say this one more time. So I'm going to say it now, okay? Uh, remember, remember to support Linux Journal. Oh, by the way, I've got a, I've got a new article on Linux Journal today. Microsoft buys GitHub three weeks later. You should go read it. And then you should go over to Reddit and you should go into a slash R slash Linux on Reddit and, and you know, move it up on, on the thingy. And you should go to Twitter and you should retweet it and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, do that. But by all means, please support Linux Journal because they are supporting this show and I appreciate that. Uh, you can go to my Cooking with Linux site. Uh, you can, you know, uh, support my habit on Patreon. By the way, this is the ArcoLinux.info site. You know, all the poor people at Arco Linux that I beat up last week. Oracle Virtualization, uh, Marcel Gagne. This is my, my YouTube channel. See, I'm covering everything really, really fast. And uh, remember to subscribe if you haven't already done that. There we go. Okay, we're back. How are we doing over here in the install? Unsquash file systems. By the way, if you have some questions, you know, uh, go ahead and ask if there's something else you'd like me to touch on uh, while we're waiting for this. But I did say I would allow this to continue, so I'm going to allow it to continue. And I'm going to sip while I'm doing this. Is anybody else out there having a glass of wine while I'm doing this? Am I the only one who's drinking? I'm just curious. You know, and remember, this is my first glass. I swear to God. And the proof is that there's very little out of that jug that I showed you at the beginning there. It's, it's, there's very little. There's like one glass. That's it. Unsquash file system, 23%. Mm, mm. I'm so tempted to do something else, but every time I try to do something else, I kill it. So I kind of have to wait, don't I? By the way, Arco Linux, while I'm doing the install, this is obviously working, so I'm not going to mess it up too much. If you go and take a look over here at the downloads, last week I messed up, okay? I went to download Arco Linux, and I downloaded the, uh, this, um, the Arco Linux B which is just a flat out default installation. You will not be alone in drinking next week. Dave and I, thank you so much. I appreciate that, I really do. Um, is that because the kids are out of school next week? <laughs> Maybe it's all about kids, not so much joining me in a drink, but because the kids will be out of school next week. Anyway, download the ISOs from SourceForge uh, over here. But the one that you're probably gonna look for is this one here. And if we go over to SourceForge, um, it's, uh, oh, actually, it's not this one. So it's, uh, let me see, uh, where am I here? Download Arco Linux. Uh, we're going to go Arco Linux Bs. This one is interesting. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's, it's all very confusing because of the different distributions here. But they have created spins of this distribution. This is an Arch Linux-based distribution. Um, <laughs> you can always download my ISO and tear them apart. <laughs> I don't tear them apart. I like to, you know, I, I want to show stuff off here. Uh, we've got Mate, XFCE, OpenBox. OpenBox was an old favorite of mine from way, way back. I occasionally still run that one. Uh, I3, I don't do a lot with I3. BSPWN, as I understand, is very similar to I3. And uh, I'll be honest, I have not played with it a great deal, so I don't actually know. Uh, Gnome, obviously, Cinnamon, uh, the Cinnamon desktop made famous by, um, by Linux Mint. Budgie, which is a, um, I, I probably shouldn't put it that way, but is, is a, you know, a Mac OS style sort of desktop. Awesome is, I don't know that I would ever call the awesome desktop awesome other than to call it by name, but, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's uh, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's a desktop. It's a virtual machine that doesn't require you to use a mouse at all. So it's a graphical desktop that requires no mouse. Uh, but I, like I said, I don't know that I've ever, I'd ever call it awesome. It is, however, extremely light. And Plasma, also known as KDE, the modern incarnations of KDE are KDE Plasma or just Plasma, if you like. And uh, by the way, it's no big secret that I'm a big fan of Plasma. So if you wanted to download, say the, uh, oh, let's say that you wanted to download the awesome version, um, then you could go over here and they've got ISOs for all the different spins. And of course you would want to get the latest and greatest. So I admire the fact that Arco Linux is creating all these different desktop versions right off the bat. So um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by that, I have to admit. Let's go back and take a look at the installation. Trinity DE PC Linux, PC Linux OS based OS present arms. Um, dude, I'll take a look at it. I would be happy to show it off. Absolutely happy to show it off. Unsquash file system, 26%. Um, let's take a, what's your distribution called? Present arms. Uh, Trinity DE, Trinity DE. Let's go and take a look at Trinity DE. I'm not gonna look at it today, 
but uh, Trinity DE, Trinity Desktop Environment, huh? Trinity Desktop Environment. All right, hey, listen, we're gonna take a look at that. I'll tell you what, we'll look at that next week, okay? PC Linux, trinity.pclinuxos.com. Trinity.pclinuxos.com. We're not gonna look at it today. Oops, having trouble finding a site. Uh, not that one, lol. Trinity.pclinuxos.com. Not that one. Okay, all right. Listen, we're gonna try to find it. We're gonna try to find it. Well, if that address is correct, uh, PC Linux, did I spell PC Linux OS wrong? Hmm. Okay, all right, well, we'll find it next week. How are we doing on our installation here? 30, 40%, okay, things are happening a little bit faster. Uh, calls runtime to create kernel, here we go, 53%, 53%. And we're coming up on 45 minutes in the show here, and I appreciate, oh, John, John, it's okay. It's okay even if you're late. Look, I've been drinking to everyone who comes online, so John, here's to you. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Glad to have you aboard. All right, let's go back. Let's go, oops, that's not where we're trying to get to. We are trying to get to here. And uh, we'll just minimize the, uh, we'll minimize that as well here. Oh, 93%, this is looking good. So let's, let's maximize the screen here. All done, restart now. Should we do it? Should we do it? All right, let's do this. Let's do this, done. Starting reboot. I'm so excited. I'm so, I'm so excited. I was excited. Aren't you going to reboot for me? Nope. Booting Arco Linux B. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Clean. Uh, let's go back to full screen here. Let's take a look at this in full screen. 1600 by 900. Francois, does anybody remember what the password was? What the secret password was? S-E-C-R-E-T. There we go. Log in. And this is Arco Linux i3. You're now connected. Thank you. Uh, you don't need to show me this message again. Um, Arco Linux i3. And I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to let you know right off the bat that um, I am not particularly familiar with, and, and that would be an understatement. Uh, let me see. I'm gonna close the window here. There we go. There's our desktop here. Uh, right click on the desktop. All right, the i3 people out there, that would be, I goofed the URL. Well, you have to tell me, you have to make sure I've got it for next week. Oh, my PC Linux OS, okay. Damon I, Damon I, you're the expert on i3. How do I bring up an i3 desktop here? Uh, let me see, nah, oh, sure, let's take a look at the package manager since you're, since you're bringing that up at the moment. Checking for updates, there's our package manager update. Sure, apply, let's install all the updates. Password, S-E-C-R-E-T. This is the i3 version of, and um, to install, sure, commit, do it. Do it, I accept it, I do. All right. Um, all right. Here we go again. All right, Dave and I, meta and enter to get a terminal, meta, all right, the meta. Meta key, meta key, uh, meta, Enter. Okay. I have a horrible feeling that my virtual machine just died on me, which actually bugs me. Uh, man, I <laughs> try Windows key and enter for terminal and then Windows key plus D for D menu to call any app. Windows key plus D. Oh, come on. Come on, guys. Well, let's do a control backspace on here. Oh, seriously? Come on. Control Alt F1. I have a bad feeling about this. I don't know. Maybe I was just never meant to run Arco Linux. <laughs> um. All right, you know what? I'm going to give it one more chance. I'm going to say uh, force shutdown and we're going to boot it one more time. All right, Arco Linux. And we're going to try to see, we're going to try the meta key thing here. 
method key is either alt or win key typically all right s e c r e t all right and we are going to do um okay there we go so it fires up the the um the file manager right off the bat which is kind of an interesting thing to fire up right away um so let's go meta d no meta enter there we go. oh there we go all right it's meta it's the windows key it's the windows key all right so there we go okay okay all right that's cool that's cool actually i like this terminal this is a nice looking terminal i like that um um no, let's just run top just for something to do here okay okay that's cool exit all right so let's i'm not doing i'm not falling for this again i'm not falling for this again at the moment uh d alt d okay what was that meta uh let me see you might have to install d menu i might have to install d menu all right you know what you know what I, I have this horrible feeling that i should probably leave it here because i am extending this well beyond what i said i would which is you know half an hour 45 minutes um windows d okay so d menu is not there uh alt d all right but that does work that actually does work um let me see hang on a second here i'm just going to check something out D menu not working. There we go. Um, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Let me see. Bear with me for a second. I'm just going to give it a try here and see. Um, um, all right. Let's one more time here. One more time. Um, it's hard to well, D menu looks like it's installed. So D menu is actually installed on this thing. D menu underscore run. No such file or directory. No such file or directory. Two to three, two to three to seven. All right. I fear, my friends, that I'm going to have to give up on this for today. <laughs> However, we did manage meta plus shift plus Q closes a window. All right. Meta, shift, Q. Okay. Oops. That was wrong. That's actually my own desktop that, had, that popped up here. Um, control C. Well, that works as well. But D menu should be installed. 4.0 X org. So D menu should be installed. But uh, for some reason, it is not popping up. Hmm. But D menu is up at the top. Uh, no, I don't know what we've got installed on this thing. All right. Uh, programs, touch, cache, menu, run. Touch. Uh, menu uh, enter let me see touch um, tilde dot cash d it's it's already there it's, it's already there it's already there hmm uh, shift all right well that does work all right so I don't have a menu let's let's try one more time here one more time d d we are not getting the menu up here. All right. Uh, guys, I'm just going to leave it here for today as opposed to spending the rest of the time trying to figure out how to use this. But obviously the installation did work through properly and probably I should have installed i3, but I was trying to make Damon I happy. And uh, maybe what I should do is I should spend some time learning how to use i3 between now and the next time that I do this. So I am going to wrap it up here. I do want to thank, yeah, weird. <laughs> It is weird. I, I do think I should be wrapping it up here. So I'm going to go back to the, to the uh, minimum screen here. And then I'm going to pop up uh, OBS Studio. And um, let's do the, uh, the transition here to have the more or less bigger screen. And I do want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank Linux Journal for making this possible. Uh, please go to youtube.com slash freethrinker at large and subscribe to the channel. Share it with other people. Tell your friends, your neighbors, your families, your, uh, your friends, your enemies, your dog, your cat, your hamster. Tell everybody. Share. And uh, 
please, I am interested in hearing what you would like me to cover. Uh, apparently next week we're going to try Trinity PC Linux OS. So that is the distribution that we're going to focus on next week. We're going to try that one out. And uh, <laughs> I have a feeling that uh, I, I might actually be able to use that one a little bit better than this one. In the meantime, à votre santé, bon appétit. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, I hope I'll see you next week. You take care out there. Bye. Let me see. Uh, stop streaming. Oh, there it is. There it is on the bottom there. Transition. Stop screen streaming. Stop screaming. <laughs> Goodbye.